Salinization occurs when the irrigation water accumulated in the soil evaporates. So, we have just now discussed that during our discussion of 2018's question related to ecology that the over irrigation leads to salinization and salinization is nothing but accumulation of salts in soil as water gets evaporated eventually. So, salinization occurs when the irrigation water accumulated in soil evaporates leaving behind salt and minerals. What are the effects of salinization on the irrigated land? So, what are the result of salinization on this irrigated land? So, options are A, it greatly increased the crop production. See, it is not possible. Increase in the crop production in the saline or salinization land is not possible because salinization is nothing but accumulation of salts like sodium and chlorine and these are not the factors, these are not the nutrients which are useful for crop growth and hence first statement is incorrect statement. Second is it makes some soils impermeable. So, this statement is correct statement because let us assume that, let us consider that this is a soil and there are many soil particles in this upper stage of soil. Right? So, these are let us assume that these are soil particles. Right? So, whenever there is no, no salinization of this particular land, water which may flow from this particular land may enter inside and can go towards the ground water. Right? So, that is possible because there are no salts in this particular soil and that is why there will be lots of gaps in the soil particles through which water can percolate inside. But now what has happened? So now what has happened? There is accumulation of salt in this particular soil. So let us consider that these are the salts. Fine. So, there is accumulation of salts now. So, what salts have done? Salt have filled the gaps which are present in the which are present in the soil particles and as a result of these gaps if any water flow on this particular soil, it will not be able to permeate inside the soil because the gaps of soil particles have been filled up by the salts of water that have been left behind as a result of evaporation. And hence, if, if salinization occurs in a particular land, then it will lead to reduction in the permeability of soil. Fine. So, it makes soil impermeable and that is why this is the answer to your question. So, answer for this question is B. Answer is B. But as this question is important, we will discuss all other options as well. So, first option was about the increase in the crop production as a result of as a result of salinization. So, soil salinity is one of the most important global problems that negatively affects crop productivity. So, it is not the productivity is increasing. No, that is not possible because whenever salinization occurs in any soil, it is sodium and chlorine which are present in that soil and these are the stress developers in the soil. And that is why they are not favorable for the growth of crops. 
and hence first statement is incorrect. Second statement is correct because we have already discussed that the presence of salt particles reduces the salinity. Next is, so uh, third option is, let us read third option. It raises the water table. So let us discuss why this option is incorrect. As soil becomes less permeable with increasing salinization of land, there will be no question of percolation of water and there is no question of increase in water table and that's why this is also incorrect. Next, option D is, it fills the air spaces in the soil with water. So it fills the air spaces in the soil with water which is again incorrect because it is not water that is being filled inside the air spaces present in the soil rather it is salts which will fill those air spaces fine so let us discuss this saline soils have some of the poorest soil physical conditions and have slow permeability to air and water resulting in less gas exchange needed for plants to grow and hence it is not the water that is being filled up in the air spaces but the salt coming from water that means sodium or chlorine that is being filled in these air spaces and hence even option D is incorrect and that's why correct choice is B. There is a concern over the increase in harmful algal blooms in the sea waters of India. What could be the causative factors for this phenomenon? So before we discuss the causative factors of algal, algal blooms, let us firstly discuss about what are exactly algal blooms. Algal blooms are the excessive growth that are occurring in a water body of algae and often blue green algae. What is the reason behind this excessive growth? It is the availability of nutrients. From where nutrients are coming for this excessive growth of these algae? Nutrients may be sourced from various land based runoffs of water, which not only brings various pollutants, but also nutrients from land. And as a result of increasing amount of land nutrients in a water body, there will be favorable conditions for the growth of algae. And hence, that is nothing but the main factor which will drive the growth of algae. Right? So that is nothing but algal bloom, which is excessive growth of algae in a water body. So the question is about the reasons behind this excessive growth of algae or algal bloom. So let us discuss what are the statements that are being given. So first statement is discharge of nutrients from the estuaries. So first of all, what are estuaries? Estuaries are those locations where land or the river meets with oceans or seas. Estuaries are the locations where rivers, that means those water streams which are coming from land, meets the oceans or seas. And these are the estuaries where we will have presence of brackish water, which is neither fresh water present on land nor marine water or saline water present in the oceans. And that's why the salinity in the waters of estuaries vary from 0 to 35 ppt, right? So these estuaries, as they are close to land, they will make sure that nutrients are made available to water body. And hence, as a result of those nutrients, algal bloom may occur. And that's why first statement is correct statement. 
सेकेंड इज रन ऑफ फ्रॉम द लैंड ड्यूरिंग मॉनसून अगेन वेन एवर मॉनसून रेन ऑकर्स देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन द वॉटर वॉल्यूम फ्रॉम ए रिवर एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच देर विल बी एक्सेसिव फ्लो ऑफ वॉटर फ्रॉम लैंड टू सी and whenever there is flow of water from land to sea even nutrients are carried towards the sea and that may lead to increased availability of nutrients which may trigger algal bloom in sea waters and that's why second statement is also correct statement third is upwelling in the seas yesterday during our discussion of ecology based previous year questions we have discussed about upwelling upwelling is that phenomenon which occurs as a result of movement of winds so as winds blow over a surface of oceans the surface water of oceans is moved and that place is filled up by the ground water or water which is present at the bottom right so bottom water moves to take the place of surface water displaced by winds and this is nothing but upwelling and we have discussed that upwelling make sure that nutrients which is present at the ground or at the bottom of oceans are brought to the surface and this also may trigger algal blooms and that's why even third statement is correct statement and hence all these factors may be causing or may be a causative factor for algal bloom phenomena right so that's why answer to this question is d you can read this this particular explanation at your home so answer is d consider the following statements first carbon dioxide oxides of nitrogen oxides of sulfur which of the above is or are the emission or emissions from coal combustion at the thermal power plant so which are the emissions out of these as a result of combustion of coal in thermal power plants so uh, you have to select correct choice from these options we know that coal is a fossil fuel and as it is a fossil fuel it will be emitting various kinds of gases which may be carbon monoxide carbon dioxide oxides of sulfur oxides of nitrogen etc and that's why all these are the probable gases which may be coming out of thermal power plants which are using coal fine so coal is a hard rock which can be burned as solid fossil fuel it mostly consists of carbon so mostly coal is a uh, coal is a hard rock consisting of carbon but it also contains hydrogen sulfur oxygen and nitrogen as well as a result of which it will emit all these gases that are given in this question that means carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide nitrous oxide etc etc fine so whenever coal is burned carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides and mercury compounds are released and that's why answer is d